Through the implementation of nonviolent livestock training and taming and animal welfare rules required around the world, production costs may be reduced. The farm's production can be made more secure and efficient and can thus become an excellent tool for cattle ranchers. Seeing the need to increase production in our livestock operations, I considered it necessary to implement a process of nonviolent training and taming of livestock. Which will make our farms animals more efficient, that is, animals that can produce more meat, produce more milk, and improve occupational safety for our farm workers. The primary goals of Rational DOMA, the Nonviolent Livestock Training and Taming Program, are to incorporate techniques for the proper handling of livestock and to improve animal welfare, reducing the dose of violence that mankind inflicts on livestock during traditional training. That's why we invited Mr. Adolfo Gonzalez, who will talk to us about his experience with his animals since he made the decision to apply DOMA to his livestock operations. Rational DOMA, or Nonviolent Training and Taming, is a strategy available to us livestock ranchers to produce a tame animal, an animal that is trained to go in and out of stables constantly and that is trained to remain in contact with people. I have always said that, for us, Training or taming is a factor for productivity and animal safety, meaning that the benefits of nonviolent taming are many, especially for us engaged in milk production. The application of DOMA methods can yield great benefits. It can correct issues of low yields in dairy and milk production, eliminate destructive behavior and attacks on operators, it can improve management of the livestock farm, and untamed animals can be incorporated into productive processes through the DOMA process. Hierarchies are determined by the animal's age and sex. Another interesting aspect is the horn structure. We handle animals with and without horns. Generally speaking, animals of greater age and weight tend to be the most dominant animals within the herd, and this hierarchy is a hereditary status. The offspring begin to adopt their parents' behaviors, and they will continue to remain dominant in their herds through the generations, contributing to the company's growth. It's all about the females. It's a matriarchy. The females are much more dominant in the hierarchy. In some hierarchies, it's the males, the isolated bulls, who can also be dominant. From there stem some management opportunities, particularly with groups of calves. When we're doing cattle drives, which are very common in the area, we introduce an older female. By doing that, the cows and the calves will be more at ease, calm and balanced while grazing on the pasture. Why? Because they feel protected by an adult animal who defends them from predators. These are all trials or procedures that we could carry out here in the tropics and which we can evaluate under our own conditions. They are alternatives, ideas, so that we can begin to apply ethology or the study of animal behavior to production. 
Son animales gregarios que pertenecen Cattle are gregarious herd animals whose society is based on a hierarchical structure. That's why it is important for livestock ranchers to apply the different methods according to their expertise so they can they can further develop their ranches. When we are going to implement this technique, in fact, you have to make workers set in their ways, change the chip. I have seen it in some farms that the first thing they do when they approach animals is to pick up sticks or logs. They approach with trepidation, intent on defending themselves from the animals. So that is when we come and teach them correct handling techniques, like how to approach an animal, what is their flight zone, what is their blind zone, the rear of the cow, from hip to hip, including the tail, that is the blind spot. At no point in time should we stand there while working with animals. The animal can't see anything, and any sudden movement will cause it to flee or attack. This state of fear will cause their hormone levels to spike, causing imbalances, which can often result in accidents on the farm. It is essential that people in charge of animal handling on livestock farms know how animals are supposed to behave and how they perceive the world. If the persons in charge have a clear understanding of all aspects of livestock behavior, they will allow the animals to live in their natural habitat, which will lead to improved management and greater ease of operations for workers. Next, Dr. Benedetti will conduct some important DOMA exercises in a corral along with a young boy who is very passionate about livestock farming and who is only 11 years old. Let's meet Duvan. My name is Duvan Jose Paternina Narvaez. My favorite cows are Kanika, Lila, and Yuri. They let you caress, touch, and drive them. Duvan is a hyperactive child who at a young age enjoys being around livestock, which is why in the company of Dr. Benedetti, he will apply the concept of DOMA on some calves and begin his learning process. Good day, Duvan. How are you? I'm good. Nonviolent training of livestock is a technique that can be implemented by children, women, and adults. It is a technique that begins with a process of acceptance and approach by humans, us approaching the cow. We must understand that we are different species. They first accept the handling of this rope, which we throw outside of the pen. They begin to look at what is happening, that it is a rope thrown outside the pen. Now we change the rope. The rope is coming from outside the pen. They can perceive that there is an object that is approaching the area where they are. Then, inside the pen, we do the same procedure as with the rope, plus we do what we call tickling. Ready? This is part of the tickling. Duvan will help me with this part, which he will perform. Duvan, throw it over, pick it up, and begin to tickle. Now that the animals accepted us and have been in contact with us, we can interact with them confidently. You can see that these animals have previously undergone a DOMA process. That is why they are so tame. As you can see, it's a technique that is based on two basic pillars. The first, and perhaps most important, is the occupational safety of the workers in our livestock ranches. And the second is to have livestock capable of higher production. 
If we can manage to have well-balanced and tame animals, you will see increases in milk as well as meat production. We hope livestock ranchers will implement these systems. We need to train individuals, work teams, ranchers and professionals so that they can get to know this process and they can spread it to a large number of livestock ranchers in Colombia. The proper management of livestock can bring about many benefits, which will be reflected in the company's profitability. That is why it is important for livestock ranchers to be willing to train their workers in the correct way of managing animals and to invest in animal welfare training. Thus, we can move away from screaming, sticks, whips, harassment, and bruise force and move towards patient and peaceful management. We have seen the importance to livestock operations of implementing strategies that help to improve the animal's quality of life and to obtain better production results. Next, we invite you to learn about the importance of using good quality mineral salts from Juan Jaramillo, Santiago Bravo, and Lino Obando. When we talk about complete animal nutrition, we need to take into account the fact that it comprises three key nutrients, protein, energy, and minerals. On this occasion, we will focus exclusively on minerals, since mineral deficiencies are some of the most common in our country's livestock ranches. We have traveled to the northeast of the province of Antioquia and the Magdalena Basin to the Santa Cruz and El Cane Haciendas, where these livestock rangers will share with us the experiences they've had when they are using less than adequate salts and the results they're currently obtaining using a product of much higher quality. We will do this in the company of a professional in mineral nutrition. The story goes that initially it was Simón Bolívar's physician who introduced mineral salts, specifically for humans. Colombia has always had cases of goiter in children and senior citizens. Goiter is a swelling of the thyroid glands. It consists of a tumor-like swelling of the lower frontal part of the neck, just below the larynx. One of the causes is iodine deficiency. It was discovered that it could be cured with the application of sea salt, which contains iodine that originates from seaweeds. They would place little bags of salt containing iodine on the person's goiter and the problem would go away. As you know, goiter is caused by an iodine deficiency, and it is believed that it was the first mineral salt used, not consumed, but absorbed through the skin. Mineral salts are a mixture of sodium chloride, macroelements, and microelements. Macroelements are the mineral elements that the animal, be it bovine, equine, buffalo, or humans, need in greater quantities, that is, in quantities measured in grams. Some of the most important macro minerals for the bovine diet are calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, sodium, chlorine, potassium, and sulfur. You also have microelements, which the animal needs in very small quantities, but which are equally necessary for our animals. 
The most important trace elements are iron, zinc, magnesium, copper, iodine, selenium, and cobalt. Among the many things that minerals do for ruminants, the most important fact is that they feed the rumen's bacteria. The bacteria in the rumen are the workers that help to digest grass fibers. If I don't nourish them, they stop working. So, those minerals are important, especially phosphorus, calcium, so they can feed the rumen bacteria so that they can digest the grass and release the protein and energy that will turn to muscle, bone tissue, or will form the fetus. So it's important to nourish these bacteria. Without these minerals, such as copper, zinc, iodine, selenium, and chromium, which is a new element whose role in the immune system we didn't know, the animal's defenses don't work. Its organism doesn't work. So our animals will be chronically ill. So it's important for us to use good mineral salts which come complete with all of these elements in balance and which are made from quality raw materials. Let's recall some of the roles played by minerals. Formation of bone structure, maintenance of basic acid equilibrium, formation of structural soft tissue, which is essential for the transmission of nerve impulses and for muscle contractions. They play a role in the development and functioning of the reproductive system, and they are important for the animal's overall immune response. Unfortunately, some mineral salts do not have the components necessary to carry out their required function in bovine organisms. Phosphorus, for example. Where can we get it from? From phosphoric rock, which is cheap and I use as fertilizer. That phosphoric rock costs me between $25 and $50 per ton. Unfortunately, there are many illegal factories that use a source of phosphoric rock that is tainted with fluoride, which is a toxic mineral, and they are mixing it with the mineral salts. That is why you find in the marketplace mineral salts that cost $10 or $15 per bag with a concentration of 8 or 10%. By contrast, a good mineral salt shouldn't cost less than $30 or $35. So when someone offers you a dozen of $15 or $10 salts, I guarantee you that they are using raw materials that are of no use to the animal, and those mineral salts will not contain what the label says. The other way to supply minerals is also the easiest, and it has already been invented, and that is mineral salts that are pre-mixed and designed to match the animal's productive stage, its species, the pastures, and the region in question. Mineral salts must be ordered to match your livestock, the location of your ranch, the type of cattle you have, and their genetic heritage. That is why you have to buy mineral salts that are balanced and tailored to your location. Ever since we started using mineral salts, things have improved greatly and those improvements have lasted. You can see improvements in weight, 
and in the overall state and health of the livestock. These are cows that can undergo a normal vaccination cycle. Cows that don't give us trouble by getting sick all the time. And the proof is in the weight. Our cattle are fattening up and being sold to meat processors. I pretty much sell to just one meat processor here, and the yield has always been good. We need to demand from ourselves, the marketplace, and from the people who are selling us the products we use at the farm, that we get the best value for our money. In this case, the salts have to be the best, and they have to match your location, your cattle, and the physiological state of the animals. You won't get the same consumption rate from an animal in the fattening stage, or a 500 kilo animal that is further along, or an animal that is ready to breed but hasn't been exposed to a bull. So every day, we have to demand more from the marketplace, and we have to demand more so we can compete internationally and gain domestic market share. You can't change brands too often because maybe other brands don't use the same components, so it's important that you always use the same brand of salts. When you add it up, using mineral salts is better business. It's more profitable in terms of weight, in terms of pregnancies, and in terms of the overall state of the livestock. So you have to sit down, Take out your pencil and think it over.